Anne Hayes critically injured after slamming her car into a home. We have a vehicle into a structure with a structure fire. An update on her condition and new video taken moments before the fiery crash. Kim and Pete calling it quits. I was just thinking like, heard about this BDE. I was just basically DTF. And Kanye has entered the chat. God sent me from that crash just so I could beat Pete Davidson's ass. Who? Chloe and Tristan welcome baby number two. He's a really hands-on dad, and so it's just easy to co-parent with him. Plus, Britney versus k -Fed. Everybody's talking all this stuff about me. Why don't they just let me live? Pop star fires back after her ex claims her teenage sons are avoiding their mom. Everybody knows I've had a tough road, but um, I I'm, I'm happy where we're at. ET's The Download starts right now. Sad news in Hollywood today as family, friends, and co-stars say goodbye to Olivia Newton-John. The actress, singer, and activist died peacefully at her ranch in Southern California this morning after a decades-long battle with cancer. She was 73. I had a lot of fears about things and about dying, and I think everyone has that, but I th I'm, I'm over that now. I mean, I've confronted the worst thing that can happen. Now, Olivia was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 1992, and after treatment, she lived cancer-free for a while. But more than two decades later, the disease returned, this time to her lower back. Now, choosing a more holistic approach, she treated the effects with medical marijuana. I'm very, very lucky that I have a wonderful husband who grows medicinal cannabis for me that's been helping me with pain. In fact, I don't even know if I have pain because I take it on a regular basis and I feel very good and I think it's doing much more for me than just for pain. Olivia's lasting legacy includes Greece, where she played high school senior Sandy, who, of course, was hopelessly devoted to John Travolta's Danny. Summer dreams ripped out. They had brought up Linda Ronstadt. They'd brought up Murray Osmond. And I said, they're wonderful. I said, but every, every guy in the world wants Olivia Newton-John as their, <laughs> their girlfriend. And John shared his memories of his co-star today, saying, you made all of our lives so much better. Yours from the moment I saw you and forever. You're Danny, you're John. Moving on now to Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson, who have called it quits after nine months together. Yeah, Kim's ex-husband, Kanye West, is weighing in in the most Kanye way mm. possible. The rapper made a rare return to Instagram with this fake New York Times headline reading, <laughs> Skeet Davidson dead at age 28. The dig comes days after Kim's lawyer told the judge that the exes were getting along amid their divorce proceedings, with the source telling E.T. Kanye is way happier now that Kim and Pete have broken up. He never took their relationship seriously or felt good about Pete being around. God sent me from that crash just so I could beat Pete Davidson's ass. Who? And Pete is letting his clothes do the talking post-breakup in a shirt that read, I feel like ish in Australia. He's down under filming his new movie, Wizards, and apparently distance didn't make the heart grow fonder. A source tells E.T. things were starting to fizzle out. Now, are you going to kiss me or not? I sure am, Jasmine. <laughs> The pair's romance kicked off with that kiss last fall when Kim hosted Saturday Night Live. The relationship played out on social media, and we got this peek on the Kardashians. Pete is, has got to be literally the best human being I've ever met. Like, the best heart. Season 2 premieres this fall and is expected to show more of their time as a couple. Babe? Yeah? Do you want to shower with me really quick? Shower with me. <laughs> We'll likely have to wait for season three to see exactly how things ended, but our sources say there is no bad blood. Telling E.T., Kim still adores Pete and will always be friends with him, but she wasn't feeling like she was willing to settle down with him just yet. So big question, what's next? Our source says Kim is ready to be single and date again. And as for Pete? My favorite thing ever, which I have yet to achieve, is I want to have a kid. Uh, wow. It's like my dream. Wow. Now on to Kim's sister, Khloe Kardashian, who's officially a mom of two. Isn't that crazy? 
The reality star and her ex, Tristan Thompson, welcomed their second child together, a baby boy, via surrogate. And this news came on Friday. Now, we're told she's been with the baby for a while and is so grateful for a bigger family. Well, Chloe and Tristan also share four-year-old mm -hmm. True, who is th so thrilled to have a baby brother. Now, Coco told us three years ago that a second child was always part of the plan. I never thought I would have only one child. I definitely don't think I would feel incomplete if I didn't have more but another one would just add more love to the house. Last month, our source said the new baby was a choice Chloe and Tristan made together last November while they were still on good terms. Just a month later, it was revealed that he fathered a child with another woman. Everything is an act of betrayal. Was Tristan going to tell me if there wasn't a baby involved? Absolutely not. So is there any chance for a reconciliation? Mm. Well, a source told us last month, they don't speak unless they're co-parenting. Chloe has moved on. And she's single again. The spark she had with the private equity investor that Kim introduced her to fizzled out a few weeks ago. As for now, Chloe plans to have the baby full time and wants Tristan and both of the kids' lives as much as he wants to be. I see Tristan a couple times a week. He's a really hands-on dad. We get along really, really well. And so it's just easy to co-parent with him. Moving on to Anne Heche, who's now in a coma after crashing into a house, causing her car to burst into flames, setting the home on fire. We have a vehicle into a structure with a structure fire. They're gonna remove uh, the body from the, the pretty vehicle and possibly transport the victim uh, to a hospital. It happened in L.A. on Friday. Haish was taken away on a stretcher and rushed to the hospital. Take a look at this ring camera video of Haish allegedly speeding down a street before slamming into the two-story home. It took crews more than an hour to put out the flames. The woman who lives in the home was inside, but luckily she wasn't hurt. A neighbor says it was a close call. And the car stopped like two feet away from where she was sitting, so she was pretty lucky. She couldn't get to the person in the car, she told me. Because of all the damage, the, all the things that collapsed, she was stuck sort of in the back part of the house. A rep for Haish tells E.T. that she suffered burns in the crash. Her slug friends are reacting, including her former co-star Alec Baldwin. My heart goes out to you. I'm sorry that you had this tragic thing happen to you, and I'm sending you all my love. I wonder if she's okay. I think it's a miracle that she didn't kill anyone. Listen, Alcoholics Anonymous works. Now, we don't know yet if alcohol or drugs were involved, but Haish has dealt with substance abuse and mental health challenges in the past. I'm very open about my life for different reasons, but one is, is the, to, to overcome difficulties in your life and to understand that you can get to the other side of them is, is really what my, what my hope is for people who have been, who have been raised in, in difficult circumstances. And just three days before the crash, she made an appearance on the Better Together podcast where she joked about downing vodka with wine chasers. It was posted the day of the crash, but has since been taken down. It's just f***ing me up, so I'm drinking some vodka and wine. Singer Amy Grant is recovering, too, after a bicycle crash last week that left her unconscious for around 10 minutes and caused a concussion. Yeah, over the weekend, her husband Vince Gill took to, took to the stage in Nashville with their 21-year-old daughter, Corinna, for this emotional tribute. Because of, of her accident and everything she'd been going through, we've been thinking a lot about her, and, uh, um, and I thought how sweet it would be for her youngest to sing this song I wrote for her. When I Amy's team tells E.T. that she's making progress every day. And switching gears now, the gloves are off between Britney Spears and her ex-husband, Kevin Federline. In a new interview that aired on ITV, Kevin claimed their two sons, Sean Preston and Jaden James, are choosing not to see Britney and haven't seen her in months. The former backup dancer added that the boys made the decision not to go to her wedding to Sam Ascari because of suggestive photos on her Instagram, telling ITV News, I can't imagine how it feels to be a teen having to go to high school. Who knows how many people ask them about it? It's tough. But Brit is not having it. Now, are you sure you want a piece of me? In a lengthy Instagram message, she called the claims hurtful, writing, It saddens me to hear that my ex-husband has decided to discuss the relationship between me and my children. As we all know, raising teenage boys is never easy for anyone. I love being a mom. 
Kevin also weighed in on Britney's conservatorship battle, questioning why the arrangement lasted so long, but showing support for his former father-in-law, Jamie Spears, saying, I saw a man who cared 100%. Jamie saved her back then. But Britney's new hubby, Sam, has her back. He slammed Kevin in an Instagram story of his own, ending with a now infamous phrase directed at the former backup dancer, keep my wife's name out your mouth. People are gonna think what they want, and, and I mean, they, I think my, my character will always show what type of person I am. Now to another newlywed, Teresa Judice, The Bravo housewife said, I do to Louis Ruelas over the weekend in New Jersey. <laughs> And it wouldn't be Teresa if things were not over the top glamorous. I mean, check her out in that gorgeous white gown. And who needs a veil when you got a crown and hair teased to the heavens? She actually had over 1,500 bobby pins in her head. She had over $7,000 worth of custom luxury hair extension. She was so zen. She was so... She was just so ready to... The Big Day was filmed for an upcoming special with Teresa's four daughters and Louis's two sons there to support them. The guest list also included fellow housewives Margaret Joseph, Cynthia Bailey, Kenya Moore, Dorinda Medley, and Phaedra Parks. And it was one heck of a party. Noticeably missing, Teresa's own brother, Joe Gorga, and his wife, Melissa. And things have gotten ugly. Yeah, source tells ET something bad went down when filming the new season. And Teresa will not stop until Melissa and Joe are divorced. Joe and Melissa were at the Jersey Shore during the wedding, and our source goes on to say they have tried for years to have a relationship with Teresa, but are officially done trying. It's sad, but the situation is too toxic. As for her ex-husband, Joe Judice, a source close to him tells ET that he's very happy for Teresa and wishes her all the best. Moving on to Jacob Elordi, who is leaning on some celeb friends while adjusting to life in the spotlight. The Euphoria star covers GQ's first ever hype issue hitting newsstands August 22nd. And he says he saw advice from his deep water co-star Ben Affleck after the kissing booth on Netflix made him an overnight heartthrob. He says, I had to go through and delete my high school pictures because that was the Instagram that I used for my life. I wish people could understand how drastic that change was. And although he's currently one of the most in-demand young actors, when he first got into theater in high school, his friends called him gay. And when they did, Jacob remembers, leaning into the makeup. I started welcoming those kinds of characters. I started welcoming the femininity. And get this, Jacob recalls basically living out of his car before he booked the role of Nate Jacobs on Euphoria. And once he landed it, he found his character inspiration at a gym where TikTokers work out. <laughs> and while we don't know much about season three of the hit HBO show, we do know it could be a long wait. No, you might have to wait oh, no. 10 years. <laughs> it oh, takes a long time, you yeah, know? No, I don't know. I think it's 2024. I'm not sure. It's nice to take a breath, but also, you know, I could, it's such a joy being there. I could, I could be there for the rest of my life. Now, Selena Gomez is enjoying her time back in the spotlight. Only Murders in the Building is nominated for 17 Emmys. But there are a few reasons why she totally gave up her acting career. In a new interview, Selena, who just turned 30, talked about leaving Hollywood someday, saying getting married and having kids would be a game changer. I hope to be married and to be a mom. Uh, eventually, I'm going to be tired of all this, so I'm probably just going to devote most of my life to philanthropy before I peace out. But don't panic, a source told us last <laughs> month that Selena is not in a serious relationship Phew. right now. So she'll be around for Only Murder season three, which was greenlit in July. Well, someone who's not quitting his late night gig anytime soon, Jimmy Fallon. He's closing out summer with some epic Tonight Show guests. Yeah, but in this ET exclusive, Jimmy told Rachel Smith he's still waiting for his crowning moment. A guest that you still want to have on the show? We put a uh, word out to the queen. No, really? Yeah, if she wants to play beer pong, whatever uh, Her Majesty wants, we will do. No luck with Her Majesty just yet, but The Tonight Show has plenty of star power this month. Demi Lovato and Meg Thee Stallion are set to co-host, and Madonna is among special guests. Madonna is a troublemaker. So how do you prepare for someone you like Madonna? You just run for the hills. Someone else that we absolutely love seeing on the show. Who? Your daughters. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. 
<laughs> Hello? <laughs> they started getting they more famous than me, so I go, yeah. yeah, I don't like this. So I took them out of the show, <laughs> and I replaced them with actor children. Oh, my god. Who are gosh. just better behaved than my oh, actual yeah? real children, yeah. <laughs> In addition to late nights, Jimmy has another project in the works with Jennifer Lopez. We both have kids. I know she's a great mom. So I go, maybe we can work in a, a children's book. And she goes, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go that way. J-Lo could be a guest co-host with you. Ben could be in on the act as well. And then why don't you do like a formal wedding for them? You could officiate, I'm sure. That's such a great You're idea. You're welcome. Can we get on that right You're now? You're welcome. Hey, we'll get Elvis. We'll get Austin Butler. And he could do Elvis for you. And if Jimmy wasn't busy enough, he's also bringing back the classic game show, Password, debuting August 9th on NBC. John Hamm came in a little cocky. Yeah, well, I mean, he's John Hamm. He's so good looking. He's but so I'm like, dashing. When he comes in, I'm like, oh my God, is there a mirror in there? Does seem like that. <laughs> right? Let's put your Password skills to the test real quick. News. Showbiz. Oh my God, Jimmy! It's I'm a not... harder game than it looks! Okay, another word. Um, tonight. Entertainment? Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> On to Travis Barker, who's conquering his fears one at a time, and of course, alongside new wife, Kourtney Kardashian. The rocker posted this video to Instagram of him taking off on a zip line through the trees with the caption, used to be afraid of heights. Another video shows him crossing a razor-thin rope suspension bridge. Oh, that looks fun. Good for him. The yeah, couple right? seem to be enjoying the post-wedding travels. We're just, you know, living our best lives and... <laughs> yeah. The two were also spotted boarding a commercial flight from L.A. to Spokane, Washington last week, according to TMZ. Now, that news comes just weeks after Court's little sis, Kylie, sparked backlash over her frequent use of a private jet for short trips. Now, well, that's not stopping her from having one epic mother-daughter date night. Here she is with four-year-old Stormy at the O2 Arena in London for Travis Scott's first solo show since the Asher World tragedy last year. Stormy, you ready, baby? Kylie shared a series of pictures from the night, including a clip of the rapper celebrating backstage. And Travis expressed his love for their support, hopping in the comments section with these emojis. Missing from the pics? Their little baby boy who was born in February. A source tells ET things are going super well for Kylie and Travis. They are doing fantastic as parents of two. Travis is very involved as a father, and Kylie loves that. And speaking of parenting, Ooh. TLC's Smothered is back tonight, taking bonding to a whole new level. Yeah, E.T. Lauren Zima caught up with the mother-daughter duo who raised eyebrows last season with some of their <clears throat> family activities. Sexy mama, go! Woo! If I have this right, you've done pole dancing together? Pole dancing yes. together? Yes! <laughs> you did a and breast milk facial with Cher's breast milk. <laughs> and Anything for the skin. And Dawn, you shared your lingerie collection with your daughter to help spice up her marital sex life. Why not? You know, I oh, like Cher said, I have her best interest at heart. And I have some cute lingerie, and we take the same size, so why not? Dawn and Cher are one of four fan favorite duos returning on Smothered Monday on TLC. And season four is kicking it up a notch. One mother-daughter pair takes baths together. Another has dated the same man. It's just a little, like, oops. She's my mom. She's my best friend. We do everything alike. What else would you do tease for this season? What can the audiences expect? My mom opens her mouth a lot, and you finally you do get to meet Jared's family this season and um, their relationship with my mom. And it's not what you may expect. You might see a, a, a physical altercation. Buckle your seatbelts because this is going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Still ahead, Bad Bunny heads back on tour as other artists dish on their unique pre-show rituals. I kissed a girl. We do a prayer. We do a affirmation. Uh, trying to you know, spend like 15 minutes a day in, in an ice, in a trash can full of ice. Plus, we're taking you inside Beyonce's secret club renaissance in New York. E.T.'s The Download will be right back. Well, 
Nicki Minaj already has 10 Grammy nominations under her belt, but she's about to be honored in another huge way. MTV just announced she's receiving the Video Vanguard Award at the VMAs on August 28th. She's only the second female rapper to receive the honor ever after Missy Elliott in 2019. Nicki is expected to deliver a career-spanning performance. Joining these other performers, including Anita, Marshmello, and Khalid, Matt Panic at the Disco, and J Balvin. More will be announced in the coming weeks. J Balvin last performed at the VMAs in 2019 with Bad Bunny, who just kicked off his massive world tour. <laughs> The reggaeton star performed to a sold-out crowd at Orlando, Florida's Camping World Stadium, the first stop of Bad Bunny World's Hottest Tour. It's been a big week for Bad Bunny. He stars in Bullet Train, which earned over $30 million its opening weekend, making it the number one movie in America. Not bad for Bunny, considering this was his very first movie role, right? Not to mention, I mean, he got to fight Brad Pitt. Good, I'm excited. This is cool. My, yeah. first, my first movie premiere. <laughs> With Brad Pitt, you shut down the west side of L.A. Come on, bro. <laughs> You said this kind of felt like a fantasy. How so? It is, it is. I never imagined before being here, being a red carpet of a Hollywood movie with a whole elenco de, yeah. de actores, Brad Pitt. <laughs> So I, I'm very excited, I um, enjoyed this moment. The concerts are definitely back in full swing mm -hmm. this summer. We caught up with the stars who are dishing on their pre-show rituals. I kissed a girl and I liked it. We do a circle. Circle! We do a prayer, we do a affirmation. There's a tiny sermon, maybe. <laughs> She's living la vida loca. I try to spend time in, in silence and then warm up, stretch. I do the same thing, but with a little bit of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I usually mix a drink. It always starts with a shot of whiskey, for sure. Even when I sing at church, I take a shot. A little tea before, a little prayer before we head out and go on stage. Carrie Underwood also eats the exact same thing every show day. Nut butter bars for breakfast, hummus and veggies for lunch, two scrambled eggs, and half an avocado for dinner. While Keith Urban gets guitar ready for the stage by strumming the banjo for wife Nicole Kidman. Just trying to stay loose. Yeah. Stay loose. It's like. It looks weird. It's weird. It's so weird. It's... Ah! Dirk Bentley hits the bath. Uh, trying to you know, spend like 15 minutes a day in, in an ice, in a trash can full of ice. John Legend eats half a rotisserie chicken. As for Jesse James Decker. I like to have a bone and ribeye. So I like to have a big piece of steak with a baked potato <laughs> and asparagus. And I like my steak medium rare. Beyonce revealed to Vogue in 2013 that her pre-show ritual includes a prayer, mm. a massage chair, and some stretching. That's exactly what I would have needed if I was invited to B's secret party over the weekend. The queen reportedly celebrated her new album, which just was number one on the Billboard Hot 200, <laughs> uh, with a bash called Club Renaissance in NYC. And her star-studded guest list rocked the Studio 54 theme, including Kendrick Lamar, Leo DiCaprio, Donald Glover, Janelle Monet, and Chloe Bailey. But it was Questlove with the boots on the ground journalism sharing this video from inside. He also reported he watched the entire club lose it when Renaissance played from start to finish three times. Well, you know who else was losing it? Lizzo, when she got the news that Beyonce spoke her name <laughs> in the new Break My Soul Queens remix featuring Madonna. Lauren Hill, Roberta Flack, Tony, Janet, Tierra Wack. Oh! <laughs> I remember when I was telling my friend's mom what my major in college was gonna be, and I told her I was gonna major in music performance, and she laughed in my face. She said, music performance? Like Beyonce? And laughed in my face. Only have one thing to say. <laughs> Madonna is celebrating the new track on TikTok too, which features a sample of her 1990 hit Vogue. And we will leave you with that actually. Thanks for watching, mm -hmm. guys. We'll see you right here tomorrow for a new episode of ET's The Download. Bye. Bye. <laughs>